hello welcome back so in this video um, we are going to solve some problems under circular motion then we start by looking at example 66 we have a question a five kilogram object uh, uh, move around a circular track of radius eight centimeter with a speed of this find the magnitude and direction of the acceleration of the object be the net force acting upon the object causing this acceleration so to, let's get first the data the mass which is m 5 kg and then the radius r is 18 centimeter we convert to meter we divide by 100 we have 0 0.18 meter the velocity v is 6 meter per second then we have to find the, the magnitude and direction of the acceleration of the object to so the magnitude a which is a centripetal acceleration is going to be v square over r and our v is 6 so we have 6 square our r is 0 0.18 by doing the division you are going to have um, 200 meter per second and the direction direction is towards the center towards the center because it's a centripetal force then the big question we have to find the net force acting upon the object causing this motion and that force is centripetal force which is going to be mass times the centripetal acceleration the mass is 5 the centripetal acceleration is 200 plane we are going to have 1000 newton so this is a solution Now let's look at the second example, example 67. It's a 220 gram kilogram child sitting in a cart to which a two meter rope is attached. The rope is tied to one motor that rotates the cart at the instant that the tension in the rope is this. How many revolutions per minute does the cart make? So indication We'll first start by getting our mass, which is 20 kg. The radius of the rope, which is 2 meters. Then the centripetal force, which is provided by the rope, it is 100 newton. Because without the rope, there will be no circular motion. Then we need to get the angular velocity first in rad per second. Then we know centripetal acceleration. Centripetal force is mv square all over r. Then we make v square the subject of the formula. We are going to have f r divided by m. That gives us our v to be square root of f r divided by m. Our F is 100, radius is 2, mass is 20. Divide and take the square root. We'll be able to get 3.16 meter per second. But we know that linear velocity is angular velocity times r then from there we get the angular velocity which we're going to get the linear velocity divided by r the linear velocity is 3.16 and radius is 2 divided by 2 we have 1.58 rad per second now and that to say our angular velocity is 1.58 rad per second which you can write as 1.58 in radians divided by one second 
Now we need to change the radians to revolutions and the time into what? Minute. Then we can now say that uh, we know that we know that uh, one revolution is two pi right and we know that one second is one over sixty of a minute. So, and also we can now see that one rat is also going to be one over two pi revolutions. So to convert this 1.5, we will say 1.58 multiplied by one over two pi in revolution all over the time one second is one over 60 minutes we to have 1.58 times 16 divided by 2 pi when we put all the values we are going to have 14.3 revolution per minute so that is the answer to convert your radians to revolution we divide by one two pi to convert seconds to minute we divide by one we divide by sixty so we look at the next question the, the next question here says calculate the angular speed calculate the angular speed for the second and the minute and the hour ends. Each of them turns 360, but the only difference is the time in which each of them take to move. We have the hour, I indicate the hours and the minutes as well as the second and of a clock. So here the theta is going to be 360 degree. All of them turns in 360. Uh, this will give us 2 pi rat if we now put the value of pi that is 2 times 3.142 rat we will have 6.284 radians now for second and for the second and the time will be for every one second it will turn 360 in every one second that's how the second and move then from there we now get our angular velocity omega is theta over t and theta is 6.284 right divided by one second so the answer will be 6.284 right per second now for the minutes and if we take the minute and for the minute and the time will just be for one minute it for the minute it will rotate 360 in every one minute and that one minute to second is 60 seconds so the angular velocity will be theta over time theta is 6.284 divide by time which is 60 when we divide this value we are going to get 0 0.105 rad per second so you can see the second and move faster than that of the minute then the last layer for the hour and for the hour and the time is just one hour and that one hour is 60 times 60 seconds 60 minutes in one hour and minute to second 60 we have 3600 seconds so the angular velocity is going to be theta over time theta is going to be 6.284 divided by the time 3600 from there we are going to get 
the value of 1.75 times 10 to the power of minus 5 rad per second. So we can see that the hour hand is the least to move very fast. It moves very slowly before it moves, while followed by the second. Then the most fastest is the second hand. So this is how to get the angular speed of the second hand, minute hand, and hour hand of a clock. Each of them turns 360, that is 2 pi, right? For a second is 1 second, for a minute is for every 1 minute, for the hour is every 1 hour. Now we want to look at the next example. The, the next example we want to look at is this. We are given that a particle is traveling a cycle of radius 2 meter with an angular velocity of this. The particle begins to slow down with an angular acceleration of this. After 5 seconds, what is the centripetal acceleration? So, our angular acceleration is minus 1 rad per second. The radius is 2.5 meter. This is the initial angular velocity omega naught is 10 rad per second. The time after 5, we have 5 seconds. Then we need to get the final angular velocity. We will now make use of the formula that the final angular velocity is the initial angular velocity plus alpha t. So the initial is 10. Alpha is minus 1. We have minus 1. And the time is 5. This gives us 10 minus 5. which give us 5 rad per second. Then we want to calculate the centripetal acceleration. So AR is going to be AR is going to be V square over R. Our V we know is omega, but this time around is final because after five seconds times R all square divided by R. When we open the bracket, we have omega square final r square over r. This gives us omega square r. And our omega final is 5 square times the radius is 2.5. So for multiply we are going to get 62 we are going to get 62.5 meter per second square so the answer is 62.5 meter square that is the centripetal acceleration so we we'll get the final velocity the angular velocity from there we we'll get the centripetal acceleration so this is how to solve this problem. Let's look at the next example. The next example is this we have uh, example 70 a crankshaft of radius this rotates at 2400 revolution per minute. What is the speed of a point at the surface of it, so we want to find the linear velocity. The radius is 8 centimeter divided by 100, that will give us 0 0.08 meter. The time here we are referring to is per minute, that is 1 minute, and that is 60 seconds. Then we have the revolution is 2400 then from there we get the theta now since we know the revolution because we know that one revolution is 2 pi radians so theta is going to be 2 pi times 2400 
if we multiply, if we multiply everything we are going to have 1508 1.6 radians pi is 3.142 times 2 times 2400 you have 15 uh, 15.1508 1.6 radians then from this we are now to find the, what is the speed of the point they will say linear velocity is angular velocity times r angular is theta over t times r the, the angular displacement is 15081.6 the radius is 0 0.08 divide by the time which is 60 seconds that is a minute when we divide we are going to get 20.1 meter per second so this is how to convert revolutions per minute to rad per second the revolution is 2400 which you convert to radians by multiplying 2 pi the time per minute is 60 seconds then the radius is 80 centimeter into meter is 0 0.08 the, the linear velocity we are looking for which is the angular velocity times r angular velocity is angular displacement over time times and the radius is r substitute we are going to have 20.1 meter per second so now let's look at the last example the last example we have a turntable rotate at this calculate its angular speed in rad per second and a degree per second so here we know the, our time so the first question let's see we have uh, omega is 100 revolution per second we want to convert this so yeah so now it's due for rad per second for rad per second our time is still one second because per second and our revolution is 100 so theta is going to give us 2 pi times 100 this will give us in form of radians when we multiply we are going to get 628.4 radians so therefore our angular velocity now we're now going to be theta over t and theta is 628.4 divided by just one second this will give us 628.4 rad per second the last one we have for degree per second for degree per second what do we do the time is still one second because we have per second per second is one second then we have revolution still 100 now our theta in degree we know one revolution is 2 pi rad I also know one revolution is 360 degree so theta is going to be 100 times 360 degree this gives us 3600 degree and our angular velocity now is going to be theta over t and theta is 3600 degree and the time is one seconds yeah, we are going to have our final answer to be 3,000 we are going to have 36,000 we are going to have 36,000 36,000 degree per second so this is how to go about solving problems under circular motion so this is where we are going to stop see you in another video thank you